Hey everyone, this is Pam Coey and I'm in my studio here. Just got back from New York and had a wonderful workshop, so thanks to all the students who came to that workshop and I'll probably have a video um, to show you kind of a little bit about what that was like and it's just really great. What I'd like to show you in this video is a couple of different things. Um, number one, I've got a large scale painting here and it's one that I've shown in a previous video. This video is um, going to be about how you flatten a large scale painting that is like a water based painting. Um, I'd like to show you that because that was a question that I have had asked of me. And then the other big question I've been getting is um, how do you fix marks, like um, marks that might smear and that kind of thing. Um, because I do tend to use a lot of different materials like crepas and uh, Stabilo pencils and woodies and things that are water soluble. So in a different part of this video, I'm going to uh, talk to you a little bit about how you fix those marks. But first of all, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how you go about flattening paper that has a painting on it. When I used to work in watercolor many years ago, uh, the paper I used was Arches 140 pound, and I usually use cold pressed paper. And of course, when you get it wet, and you know, I used to work wet into wet a lot, so by the time I was done, the painting would be really rippled. And you know, that's fine if you frame it behind glass under a mat, because you don't really see that rippling too much, but um, what I'm doing now, these days, with this larger paper here, and this again is um, Strathmore Mixed Media uh, Paper, and this painting I've, I've shown you uh, on another YouTube video, it's, um, it's ready to be flattened and mounted. That doesn't necessarily mean it's finished, okay? So, but before I can even mount it, uh, what I noticed was that, you know, like any water-based paper, uh, water media paper, uh, it, it tends to ripple, and you can't really see that too well. But even if you can't see it, um, just trust me, it's kind of wavy and ripply. And, and if you're working on paper like this, you know that that happens. So this is my Strathmore Mixed Media paper. It comes on a roll. The size of it is 42 inches tall by 8 yards. And so it's a great, great paper. It's um, 140 pound, which means like if you were to weigh about 500 sheets of this paper, like single sh sheets of paper, like around 22 by 30, it would weigh 140 pounds. That's kind of where they get the weight from of the paper. The higher the weight, the heavier the paper because the heavier those 500 sheets would weigh. But anyways, uh, I use this a lot. It's good for water-based media like acrylic and gouache and watercolor and, and anything like a, a dry mark making tool that you can use with water. But if you were to gesso this, you could also work with it in cold wax medium and oil. But for now, what I have here is an acrylic based painting. It's rippled and I just wanted to kind of show you the steps and the process uh, of how I go about flattening this. And you know, like anything, it is a process and um, this is large scale. So everything I talk about here is um, kind of oversized, but it works for any size rippled paper. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to show you was, um, I do have the painting here and it's um, face down and maybe you can see a little bit of that rippling along the edge there. Uh, you might be able to see it just along that bottom edge. Uh, but in any case, um, that's kind of what happens. And I'm just going to remove this for one second here, roll it over that way. Underneath it, I have um, this blotter paper. And blotter paper is very absorbent. And it's roughly, it looks like about 20 inches by 30 inches. And I get it from the local university bookstore. It's not hard to get and it's not very expensive. I, what I did was I, to make it um, cover the width of this board, and underneath it is particle board by the way, and I'll talk about that. I wanted to cover the entire thing, but I have two layers. So what I did was I bought enough of these blotter papers, and then what I did was I taped the back side with packaging tape. It's shiny. You can see the seams there. But notice I have two layers. And um, this process involves getting the back side of the paper wet, really wet. And so I want the, um, I'll show you that process. After it gets wet, then what you do is you take most of the moisture off and then you put the wet side against the blotter paper. The water goes into the blotter paper and then you put weights on top. The base layer is particle board because um, it's a nice flat surface and um, most of the moisture is going into the blotter paper. You really don't want to get, you know, wet, anything wet on the particle board because what happens is like a sponge. It's going to soak up that water 
and then start to get crumbly. So that's why not only did I seal the seams of the blotter paper with packaging tape, but I have two layers because I'm really trying to make sure that I don't get the particle board wet. So, okay, so again, there's the particle board on the bottom and it's four feet by eight feet. It's larger than the painting, which is about three and a half feet by about seven feet. It's kind of important that it be bigger than your painting. And then again, the blotter paper. And one more thing I'm gonna do before I get the back of this wet, I'm just gonna roll it up here and set it aside for one second. Okay, I'm gonna put down some brown paper and this is just brown pref paper and I'm putting it down because um, there's going to be a lot of water on top of the painting, the back side anyways, and I'm trying to list, you know, kind of control the amount of water that hits the blotter paper. I don't want, you know, like floods of water and in this process, you know, there, there is a lot of water that I put on the back side of the painting, so I'm just trying to control that a little bit as far as how much ends up on the blotter paper. So that's why there's a sheet of brown paper there. So before I actually get started um, wetting the back of this painting, I'm going to show you how I lock in these marks because I get a lot of people asking questions about, you know, Craypaws and Artgraph and Stabilo and uh, Woodies and things like that. All the things that I love to use in uh, my mark making and I do have a way to fix the marks without using fixative. You know, it, it works very well. So um, let me just step over here and I'll show you what I do. So here's an example of one of my paintings that has some uh, mark making on it. I just put like this crayon on here that doesn't need to dry and you know you can take art graph especially if you're not using it in a, you know, with water, you can just make marks on it. So whatever you do like this. So a lot of people ask me, you know, what do you do about these marks? How do you lock them in? And so here I'm making some fresh, just dry marks, right? And, you know, if this were kind of the end of a painting or even if it's in between stages and you're just trying to lock in, all you would do is take the golden polymer medium gloss, and I have it in a, a squirt bottle like this, just easier to handle. Or you can take uh, just even our regular gel gloss, um, also by Golden, because this is uh, an acrylic painting here, and put a little bit of it on a blue shop towel like this. And this is um, for me like it's, I think it's a better way, it's a less toxic way to seal in those marks. So you just put a little bit of this on there. And you can do this at any time, you know. So if you have marks that are vulnerable, then all you have to do is basically do this and spread that around. You want kind of a thin layer, you don't need much. If you have some marks like, say, crepe paws, now these are crepe paws, and if, if you're using those, you want them to set up a little bit more, just give it a few days, they will dry enough. And I just blot, so I'll go over these areas where I just put the marks, like this, and it'll leave a thin film on there. And you can see, you know, a little bit comes off, but there it's, it hasn't removed the mark, so it's still there. You can see it. And when it dries, you know, it's basically locked in there. So you're not going to smear it. And then if you keep working on it and, and of course, you know, you can actually put multiple um, layers of this on there if you're not really sure and you want to make sure things aren't moving around. I don't mind a little bit of that moving around, but, um, you know, some people care a lot and sometimes you've got a precious mark. So again, um, I think the answer for me anyways has been the, the golden polymer medium. Uh, or the golden regular gel gloss to lock in marks. And then over here I have two buckets. One is they're both clean water and then I also have a paint tray that has water in it and a big sponge. Uh, got two buckets because one is for dipping in clean water and then um, the other one is sometimes as you You'll see in the process, sometimes the back side of the paper can shred just a little bit and those little pieces of paper um, I'll put into the other second bucket so that I can not get these little bumps underneath when I flip this. So the wet side will end up going down against 
the blotter paper. Okay, so now I'm going to start getting this wet on the back. The reason you get the paper wet on the back and we're getting it really wet is because what happens is the paper fibers are going to expand. And again, this is a water-based painting. I've not done this on a cold wax medium and oil painting on, say, arches. So you just start to, you get your, uh, in this case I'm using a, you know, a clean roller here on one of these extended rods just to save my back. And you're going to start getting the back of the paper wet, just like this. Um, you want to kind of just, you know, flood it on there and don't worry about, you know, it being too even right at the moment because we're going to even it out later. First step is just get it wet. So here we go. And uh, you know, you want to take time with this. Don't be in a hurry. A lot of these things are not, you know, they're not the kind of thing you can do fast if you want to do them right. Um, the idea is, uh, I remember when I used to do this on the watercolor paper, I would spend a good 10 or 15 minutes just getting the backside wet. And you're trying to get uh, water all over the back. And, you know, as you do this, the water soaks in and then the paper fibers will expand. Now, so imagine that your paper is starting out at, say, three and a half feet by seven feet. And by the time I've applied all the water to the back side, it probably will have expanded anywhere from a half inch to even an inch on the width and the length. I'm just guessing, but I know that. And the way I know that is because, uh, I was mounting a cold wax medium painting that was on Arches oil paper. I didn't put water on the back side, but I did put glue on the back side of the painting. I was going to mount it on panel. Well, glue has moisture, so in some ways I kind of saw the same thing happen on my cold wax medium painting as I'm going to show you on this painting. The paper expanded, and because it was a diptych, I found that the marks didn't really line up because the paper expanded. So that's when I learned that, you know, probably not a good idea to put glue on the back side of a cold wax medium and oil painting on, say, Arches oil paper. Because, uh, especially if it's meant to be like a diptych or something, because the lines just, you know, after that expansion, it's really hard to match that up. And you can fix that after you've mounted that onto the panels. But if you can avoid that, which is what I now do, I just put glue onto the um, wooden panel. And you'll see that in video 46 if you happen to, if you haven't seen that yet, I recommend you watch that because that's a, a smaller painting, but uh, it, it applies to really any size painting. Okay, so notice that I'm just getting this wet and I'm kind of avoiding the very edge because I want to get that with a sponge. I don't want a flood going on to the brown paper, which will then soak into the, uh, the blotter paper and then underneath the par particle board. So I'm just trying to control the amount of water, but at the same time, really, really soak it. And I will speed up this video so that you don't have to watch as I do this entire process, because it does take time, but uh, just keep putting more water on there, getting it distributed. I like using this paint roller because it really saves your back and getting a pretty even distribution. If you see any puddles, you know, kind of soak them up and spread them out. And you can really see that when you just tilt your head and see where the water is puddling and it is going to puddle. Okay. So then, you know, once you've got a lot of water on the back side of this, you take your sponge and I'm going to sop up just a little bit of water. Like I see that there's kind of a puddle over here that got onto the brown paper. It's going to soak that up a little bit. And uh, now the water's on the back side. It's not on the front side of the painting. And there's a, you know, the painting's acrylic. So the water doesn't come through to the other side. After you put the initial amount of water on the back, I just take a sponge and I add a little bit more. Well, that's kind of a lot more. But the point is you're just trying to get it all covered with water so that it has a chance to soak into the paper and that's the part that takes time. So that's why you have to wait, I'd say at least 
10 minutes for it to do the maximum amount of expansion. I mean, paper doesn't keep expanding infinitely. There's a time when it stops expanding, but you just want to make sure that you get it really wet, give it plenty of time to do all the expanding it wants to do before you flip it with the wet side down and then weight it down. So you're going to weight this down overnight and you'll see I have a big sheet of plastic that I put over the surface of the painting and then in this case I'm just going to use some tables to weigh it down. Now you, you know if your painting's not this big you can obviously use anything for weight. You can use books, you can use some chairs, um, anything that you happen to have but in this case in this studio I have some extra folding table so I'm going to use that and let me just walk around and get the other side okay so again you can get that water sopping on the back and get the corners now get the edges want that to evenly expand all over the surface and there's not much shredding you know just a tiny bit I'm not scrubbing, I'm just lightly taking the sponge and working the water over the entire surface. So keep tilting your head, make sure you got all of it. I'm wringing out the sponge, there's no, you know, there's really very little water left in here. Now I take the sponge and I want to get the excess uh, water off the back side of the paper that'll just help speed the drying because the whole thing about this is you know you get it wet you want the paper to expand and then you want it to dry but you want it to dry underneath weight so what I'm doing now is getting all the excess water off the back so that now it may look damp but it's actually saturated with water and it is kind of leveling out it looks to me like it's not quite as wavy but anyways it's going to be wavy until you uh, weight it down and let the water go into the blotter paper and you gotta let this sit you know really for I would leave it under you know probably for several days to a week and you know that it's uh, dry when you lift every all the weight off and you lift if you have plastic over the top which I'm gonna have and I'll show you it's a sheet of uh, high density polyethylene just like my tabletops that I use and it's a large sheet that matches the size of the particle board and you'll see that when you lift all the weight off and you feel the paper it's going to feel well it, if it's dry it will not feel cool to the hand if it is wet or damp it'll feel uh, cool to the touch so you want to make sure that it doesn't feel cool to the touch because if it does that means there's still water in there and you want to let it dry some more. So obviously uh, where you live, what the temperature is and what the humidity is and all those things. Now you could have a heater going on close by. That would probably help speed up the drying process. But again, get the excess water off so that it looks just kind of a mat and you don't see any puddles. Okay, so there's that. I think I've gotten it pretty well. Just like that. Good. So now I need to basically flip this painting and put the wet side down. It's not really tricky, but it is a big, you know, big surface here. So I'm just going to like fold this over. And on this painting, you know, I have not fixed those marks yet, like I just showed you in the video. I'm going to do that later. But um, for right now, I'm just going to get this brown paper out of the way. So I don't need this anymore. That was just a barrier. Okay, so now i got to put the wet side down. It can be a little tricky, I guess, but peel it apart and flip it so that there we go. Whoops. It's paper stronger than it, it looks. Um, so anyways, it kind of feels like fabric when it gets all nice and the back is wetted and everything like that. Okay, so you kind of want to just get it um, 
damp side down against the blotter paper. And then I'm going to grab some freezer paper, put it on top of here. I like to get this uh, freezer paper on a roll because it's so easy to work with. So I'll set it here. And I'm gonna put the shiny side down. Not that it really matters. I don't think, you know, I don't think it really matters, but um, just cover it like this. People ask me like why do I work on paper when and then mount it on board when I could just um, work directly on wood. Um, the answer though is you can see the size of this and if I had um, say 10 or 20 of these on cradled panels I would soon be running out of space. So I like to work on paper, mount them later. And, uh, you know, and also if you're working toward an exhibition like I am, then you can like, if you have 20 of these, you can pick the 10 that you really want to mount onto panel. They're so much easier to store when they're just paper. I get that question a lot, and I know people will probably wonder, well, why is she doing that? But And also, just because I'm mounting this, when I do mount this on panel, it doesn't mean it has to be done. It just means that now it's in a position where uh, it's kind of like now you could sand on it a little bit more, even if you went straight through the paper onto the panel. You know, if you really wanted to get that aggressive, you could do it because you can always paint over it. But just getting it to this, this far in the painting stage uh, on paper and then once you get it onto the um, cradle panel, there's so much more you can do. And so I just, I just love paper. I guess it's, it's a different feel. So now I'm gonna get the plastic and I'll show you that. Okay, so this, this is my um, same stuff, same material that I used ooh, on my uh, tabletops. It's, um, it's high density molded plastic. It's about 3 16th of an inch um, in depth. So, line it up here. I, have it, I had it cut to match the size of the particle board. So, okay, there we go. That's good. Okay, now all you have to do is weigh it down with tables. This is a great way to get exercise, by the way. Okay, so there's one. And high density molded plastic, like this plastic here. I mean, I love it because it's uh, pretty indestructible. And sometimes I just put my paint on it. Um, it's kind of my palette, so you've probably seen that in videos, but I put the paint right on it and then it's very easy to clean it off, but it's kind of a multi-purpose thing. It's kind of pricey in the beginning, but then once you have it, you know, you can keep reusing it. And so that's why I like that surface. Okay, so the idea is even distribution like this. I probably will put a second layer of uh, tables on here because a um, couple things the more pressure there is the faster it's going to dry and if the whole point of this is to flatten it out the paper um, you really do kind of need a lot of that weight so if you have the weight great but I think even more important than that is to give it plenty of time to let the water on the underside of your painting soak into the blotter paper because, I mean, there's not a lot of circulation going under, underneath this, so you have to figure that um, even if you have a heater going, it's not, not gonna speed up the process too much. So just, I, what I would suggest is actually just kind of forget about it. If you have a place, you can just lay it and leave it there for a good week. Because many times I took out the watercolor paper, like decades ago, after I'd done this process, and I'd be like too impatient. 
and I'd lift off all the weights and I touched the back side of the paper and it was just a little bit cool and then sure enough I'd come back and it's like it would ripple again so it's better to leave it in too long like there is no such thing as too long but there's definitely not long enough okay so I hope you enjoyed the video and um, if you like this kind of content um, please like and uh, subscribe and share if you think anyone can use this kind of information keep the questions coming uh, uh, this this video and kind of answering your question about how do you fix uh, various kinds of mark making materials onto the surface of a, a water-based painting um, those are all questions that give me ideas for future videos so I want to thank you for um, filling out the form which is in my description box underneath this video and every video I try to put it there it's just a simple form you fill it out ask a question and then when I'm looking for topics for future videos I go there and you know if I find several people asking the same question it's a great topic for um, the next video so Thanks everybody for subscribing. I really appreciate it. And I just uh, really um, means a lot to me, your comments. And, uh, and I should just say that um, thanks to those people who have recently signed up for my powerful design and personal color course, I had a special going in through the end of August. And well, it was so popular that I think I'll extend it for um, a little bit longer. And so what you can do is um, go to that link. What I will be doing too is um, having some additional giveaways and they're gonna be kind of merit-based. People who are part of my course can win some really great prizes. So um, if you ever were thinking about signing up for my course, now's a great time. I'll be giving away a lot of wonderful paint sets that are provided by Gamblin. Just keep visiting my channel and watch for those um, upcoming giveaways. I hope you enjoy them and uh, thanks very much. Have a good one, bye-bye.